Sting's first solo interview. Stinks like doggy do. Mm. Our video of the day comes to us from Kamala Harris in Philadelphia. That's in Pennsylvania, Cat. She did her first sit-down interview all by herself like a big girl. But when we talk about bringing down prices and making life affordable for people, what are one or two specific things she has in mind for that? When we talk about bringing down prices and making life more affordable for people, what are one or two specific things you have in mind for that? Well, I'll start with this. Um, I grew up a middle class kid. My mother raised my sister and me. You know, I grew up in a neighborhood of folks who were very proud of their lawn, you know? And, um, and I was raised to believe and to know that all people deserve dignity. And that we as Americans have a beautiful character. You know, we have ambitions and aspirations and dreams, but not everyone necessarily has access to the resources that can help them fuel those dreams and ambitions. So when I talk about building an opportunity economy, it is very much with the mind of investing in the ambitions and aspirations and the, and the incredible work ethic of the American people. That meant nothing. <laughs> but here's a rule of thumb. If a politician's answer to housing prices includes lawns, you'll probably end up sleeping on one. <laughs> Meanwhile, she introduced a new accent at the Congressional Black Caucus dinner over the weekend. Watch. Hello to all my divine nine brothers and sisters. <laughs> My <laughs> and to all my HBCU brothers and sisters. <laughs> I got a hand to her. She's the woman of a thousand voices, and they're all annoying. <laughs> Matt, can you decipher what she said in that uh, response about the economy and prices? Not really. I, I like the, the accent she does because it's supposed to sound urban, I suppose, but it, it ends up sounding like a, almost like a plantation owner in the antebellum south or something. Yes, yeah. Which I, I don't think is what she's going for at all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but for the rest of it, I, she, I don't think I'm the first person to point this out, but I, I, I see myself in her when she gives answers because this is like when I was in eighth grade mm -hmm. trying to fill out the word count on a book report. Yeah. And you know, it's like she doesn't know what she's going to say. When she's in the middle, you can watch her. When she's in the middle of a sentence, she doesn't know what the next sentence is going to be. Yes. And so she tries to stretch out the sentence for as long as she can so it doesn't end. Then she has to start a new one. Yes, exactly. That's the, that's the process. Yeah, it's funny. It's like sometimes I think, Adam, that she's um, saying the things, too, that the people who are coaching her tell her, like, here's what you should say next. And she'll say... And I'm going to say next. And she'll actually say the thing that she was, the, like, the actual directives. Yeah, no, I heard, like, sometimes in the bedroom she has a teleprompter that says, uh, orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Uh, is that going to make the show? Yeah, of uh, course. <laughs> uh, you know how low our audience oh. is. <laughs> But it's like she keeps saying hope and change, which describes my wallet. Uh, <laughs> and it's like, well, was I better off four years ago? Yes, I was single. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but it, I mean, look, like voting for her after Biden is like going to the dentist to get rid of your hemorrhoids. <laughs> <laughs> and. And, and that accent, like, she put on a fake Southern accent, and then she went to California, put on a fake Mexican accent, you know? <laughs> and then she went to Minnesota with Ilan Omar and married her brother. <laughs> <laughs> I should have stopped three jokes ago. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> they appreciate it. Greg, Greg, can I? Yeah. Can you stop having the stand-up comedian doing a whole set right after me? Because... <laughs> It makes me look boring by comparison. <laughs> nah, you're great. Like, go yeah, to someone else it? and then, yeah. <laughs> your, your, your movie is number four, I Can't Make a Homemade Porno, okay? <laughs> so, that's what I'm talking about. That's right. That's right. These people. Kat, is, does this topic make you smile? Do you know that that was actually edited to make her look better, that uh, gobbledygook that she spouted? Greg? Yes. 
I grew up a middle class kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that not good enough of an answer? <laughs> it is for a presidential. Okay. Also, lawns. Yes, <laughs> like, lawns. Like, she, people had lawns, and like they want. She so she was like, okay. She said specifics. So she said she grew up a middle class kid. People cared about their lawn, and then she started talking about the opportunity economy, which is her thing, yeah. right? But well, I'm still really unclear on what that is. Yeah. I, I, I think it's interesting because Biden set the bar an interesting place for what a, a, is acceptable in an interview to say, but he's old. <laughs> like, yeah. That, yeah. there was that excuse. I don't know with her what the excuse is, and I, why aren't there these follow-up questions of like, that wasn't what I asked you at all. Right. You, you know, I didn't ask you if people in your neighborhood had lawns. That mm -hmm. is actually, that is very low yeah. on my list. And I... <laughs> I don't think, and, you know. I really expected more from Brian Taft from Philadelphia Action News. I would. Uh, yeah. If I were Brian Taft, I'd be like, this is my big moment. Exactly, Brian Taft. You really dropped the ball on that one from Action News. Right. Don't you wish you were working at Action Action News? You just want to be Philly. part of a news team. You yes. want to break a story on, while running. Exactly. That's what you want to do. Exactly. Uh, I don't I'd know like why they think that face. you break stories or was jogging. Uh, but they, there's every promo. Um, a couple of things come to mind. Mm -hmm. Number one is when your setup is the punchline, which is what you rolled in. I'm saying to myself, you'll probably play the beginning, but when you play the whole thing, it is so astoundingly inane. And then you wonder why David Pluff and all these experts say, I don't care with the criticism. You will not sit down with anybody. Mm -hmm. You will not do an interview. And if you sit down with somebody, I want the other guy who's not allowed to have an opinion on anything sitting next to you who happens to be your running mate. So this is, to me, really scary. Because I actually don't think that she has any idea what she would do if she was president. I'll tell you exactly what Trump would do. You guys might not like it, or but you, everyone in this room knows exactly what Trump would do. Yeah. He's, he's going to pick up where he left off. You know where he stands in his policy. He's going to offend some people and please some other people. When she gets in that Oval Office, there'll be somebody else running the country that we haven't met yet. Mm. And that should be a little scary. It is. All right. Good for you. Always... Sympathy applause. Okay. <laughs> Up next, uh, Mickey gave officials a thrill while we put the bill. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.